Battery trains. Right, I got a lot of interesting comments on the last video about these. Go watch that if you've been already. And if you're liking these videos, make sure to subscribe. Anyway, I'm sure we all know what a battery is, but just in case, it's some funky chemicals that create a flow of electrons under certain conditions and are a way of storing energy. So where are these relevant on the railway? Well, as it turns out, a pretty big chunk of our railways aren't electrified. And for all the people who are saying we don't need to electrify, Diesel trains just aren't that great. Now, I love diesel trains, but I'm saying this from the perspective of the average passenger or the railway operator. Climate change and health issues aside, they vibrate a lot. They're very loud. And like, vibrate a lot. And are just generally quite unpleasant for passengers. And everyone who lives by the railway. Even all that aside, these things take three to five business days to accelerate. Yep, still not up to speed. And that ultimately means you'll be running fewer trains, and journey times will be longer too. Even though railway emissions are almost nothing compared to the rest of transportation emissions, yes we do need to electrify still, if we want a quick and efficient railway, but this is happening quite slowly, as electrification just isn't that cheap, and we know the government doesn't like spending money. So, of course, why not put batteries on trains? You need minimal line-side infrastructure, and can electrify your trains. Surely that's cheaper. Well, not exactly. For reasons that will take about an 8 minute video to explain. Right, first of all, trains use quite a bit of power, as they're pretty big. That means you need a lot of batteries, especially for bigger trains, as batteries just have a very poor energy density. Basically, for every kilogram of battery, you don't get very many kilojoules of energy compared to other fuels like diesel. But for bigger trains, especially freight, you would need more batteries to move the heavy train, but these heavy batteries make the train heavier, needing more batteries to move this train. And eventually, there's no freight or passengers left, it's just a bunch of batteries on wheels. Which, um probably isn't that useful. So unless the energy density of batteries drastically improves very quickly, the physics just make this impossible for most trains. It makes a lot more sense to just not have to store energy on the train, only collecting it as it's needed from the wires. Now for small trains that don't need to go very fast, like on small branch lines that are only a couple of miles long, batteries actually make perfect sense here. And the Greenford branch has actually had a lot of battery testing recently, which is a Apparently going well, with modified old D-stock trains to demonstrate the technology. But again, this is a two and a half mile long line. Short branch lines are also very suited for battery operations for a few more reasons. Because they're so short and often single tracked, they'll only have one train on the line at a time, meaning you only need one charger, and only one grid connection, and one location for maintenance. But batteries, unlike proper electrification and even diesel, need to be charged quite often, and that means the train needs to be stopped. So obviously, this isn't going to work for long distance trains, and certainly not high speed trains. But if you're charging while moving, you've got wires up anyway, might as well get rid of that heavy battery. But charging brings up several other issues too. They take quite a bit of time to charge, and that means trains will need to wait at charging points for the battery to charge which undoes any of the time savings you make compared to a diesel train. And anyway, those long waits at stations mean batteries just aren't an option for any urban railway where we need to keep things moving as quickly as possible. And yes, fast charge batteries are a thing, but that brings us on to the next point. Batteries don't last forever, or really that long. If you've an old phone, you'd know this. Over time, the battery's performance drops quite a bit. This is based on the number of charge cycles, and fast charging wears out the battery a lot faster than slow charging. This is an issue because batteries are not cheap at all. So when you've to replace the battery on the train several times across its lifetime, that cost is really gonna add up. But that also means that trains will be out of service for longer, meaning you probably need a bigger fleet of trains, which is a 
again, quite expensive, especially compared to line-side electrification. Le electrific electrification. Yeah, I'm up too late again. Where the only real cost is the upfront cost to build it. Maintenance costs are not actually that crazy, but fast charging also brings even more cost, as you can't suddenly draw an entire journey's worth of power off the grid in 15 minutes. You need big storage batteries next to the charger, which will slowly charge over time, and prevent too much energy being taken off the grid at once. But as we've said, batteries are not cheap, and these will also need to be somewhat regularly replaced too. So this cheaper alternative can actually turn out to be quite expensive on some lines, and doesn't even work with most lines. However, there are some more places where batteries do make sense. As we know, putting in overhead wires means moving things like bridges and tunnels, which is the biggest cost of electrification. However, what we can do with batteries is have a small battery on a train that charges throughout the route while the train is under the wires. And if there's a small section with a tunnel or a bridge that's really expensive to move, we can just use the battery to pass through that small section, but still keep the rest of the route electrified. This keeps the battery nice and small, and allows the route to be electrified without spending way too much money. This also means that we can remove the complexities around battery charging, as it can charge while the train is moving. Of course, this isn't ideal, but it still gets most of the line electrified. Batteries can be really useful on freight too, not as the main source of traction of course, as we've discussed earlier, but for shunting in yards. How long, is it, how long does it need to be? There tends to be lots of workers walking around in yards, and 25 kilovolts probably isn't the safest thing to have there. But also, electric wires can get in the way of loading and unloading freight, which is often done from the top. Oh damn, he's, he's spatted. Right. <laughs> So having a small battery that can charge throughout the whole journey, then be used for low speed shunting in the yard, is actually quite useful, as the battery only needs to get the train up to 5 miles per hour or so. That's definitely possible with the batteries that we have, and in fact the class 93s have batteries for exactly this. So batteries have their place on the railway, but they aren't a replacement to proper electrification. They work on short branch lines, shunters and shunting moves for freight locos, or filling in little but expensive gaps in conventional like ele F not this again. Electrification. But shouldn't be used as a distraction where we should really be putting up wires. We've got a Discord server if you're interested, link is in the description and um yeah I guess I'll see us next time.